1950s, the Guatemalans dared to challenge an American business that controlled much of its economy. The United Fruit Company of Boston owned half a million acres of land, the railroad, the port, and telecommunications. But most Guatemalan peasants found it difficult to survive. In 1950, Jacobo Arbenz was voted president. He wasn't a communist, but some of his close allies were. A former military man, Arbenz sought to modernize Guatemala's backward society. Washington was alarmed. What we were faced here with the uh, obvious uh, intervention of a foreign power because uh, these homegrown parties are not really homegrown. They're being funded or uh, advised uh, by a foreign power, i.e. the Soviet Union. The Arbenz government, which had been in power from 1950, didn't enjoy any logistical support from the Soviet Union. We didn't even have diplomatic relations. There was no Soviet mission in Guatemala. President Arben started a land reform program, buying up fallow land to distribute to peasants. In compensation, he offered the landowners the values they had themselves declared for taxes. United Fruit was offered just over a million dollars for its land. When Arbenz declared nationalization, the company, backed by the United States, claimed $16 million. He saw that I didn't look very pleased. He said, aren't you happy about the news? And I replied, now we're going to have to fight on two fronts. We're going to have to fight internally against the landowners and also against the United States. My uh, counterpart, the Guatemala, chief, Guatemala City Chief of Station, was sending in reports, too, about communist infiltration in the government. And, of course, he mentioned uh, Jose Manuel Fortuny and some of the uh, old-time uh, Stalinist communists who were uh, gaining favorable positions in the Arbenz regime. In this impasse, the U.S. named John Purifoy as its new ambassador. Purifoy had had experience of communist efforts to gain power in Greece. Purifoy said to Arbenz, Mr. President, we can sort out all this business of the United Fruit Company so that you can come to a satisfactory agreement with them. The United Fruit Company is not the problem. The problem is the communists that you have in your government. No less a figure than John Foster Dulles, head of the State Department, was part of the firm of lawyers acting for the United Fruit Company. His brother Alan was the head of the CIA. So it didn't take much of an effort on their part to persuade their president, a military man, Mr. Eisenhower, to give them the green light to overthrow Arbenz's government. U.S. Secretary of State Dulles takes the rostrum to urge united action by the Americas to outlaw international communist intervention in the Western Hemisphere. This conference was shocked by the dastardly attack on members of the United States Congress by those who professed to be patriots. They may not themselves have been communists, but they had been subjected to the inflammatory influence of communism, which avowedly uses extreme nationalism as one of its tools. Arbenz once again put on his colonel's uniform as Guatemala prepared for war. In Esquipulas, an important religious shrine in a very Catholic country, the church helped organize the opposition to Arbenz. A CIA operation,
codenamed PB Success, mobilized disaffected exiles and peasants into action. What we wanted to do was have a terror campaign uh, to terrify our bench particularly, and terrify his, his troops, much as the German Stuka bombers terrified the population of, of uh, Holland, uh, Belgium, and, uh, and Poland at the onset of World War II, and just rendered everybody paralyzed. The UN met in emergency session. Guatemala City was strafed from the air. Rebels invaded from Honduras. The CIA spread panic. Washington denied responsibility. The information available to the United States thus far strongly suggests that the situation does not involve aggression, but is a revolt of Guatemalans against Guatemalans. The Soviets were warned. Stay out of this hemisphere and don't try to start your plans and your conspiracies over here. The American PB success campaign brought the government down and drove Arbenz and his wife into exile. 9,000 of his supporters were arrested. Many were kept in jail without trial for years. They even set up anti-communist committees where anyone could go and give the names of people who had been loyal to the revolution. These people would then be mercilessly kidnapped, killed and so on. Among those who fled was a young Argentine doctor, Ernesto Che Guevara, who went to Mexico and there met Fidel Castro. I remember my talks with him. He was terribly indignant and embittered by these events, which had interrupted an endeavor which wasn't even radical. It was a relatively simple change, land reform, which was very just and necessary.